Hi everyone and welcome along to today's webinar. My name is Roshni and I head up customer success here at Sweet Files and today what I'll be taking you through is the Sweet Files web app and introducing you to a couple of our other apps as well. So um, settle in, it's, we're going to probably take the whole hour and I'll record the session as well and send that recording across to you so that you have that have that to look back on. Um, what I'll do is start off by logging in to Sweet Files. So you might have already done this part, but um, it's really good for anyone who is exceptionally new, like brand, brand new to get the full uh, login process down pat. So if anyone does have any questions at all, then please do add them to the Q&A section, which you can hopefully see in the webinar tool there. And I'll be able to answer those as I kind of switch between sections. I'm going to cover off the web app mainly, but I'll also talk through the Outlook add-in and I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the Sweet Files Drive. For those of you who are Sweet Files admins, I also have a training session this after, later on this afternoon on the administration side of Sweet Files. So if you're wanting to learn about security groups or user permissions or setting up scanning, then come along to that one uh, and I'll take you through through all of those things. The other sessions that I run throughout the week are on templates and on the Zero Practice Manager integration. So if you don't have those links already, then please reach out to us at support at suitefiles.com and we'll be able to share those registration links so that you can come along to those. If you can't make it, then you can also register anyway and we'll be able to send you a recording of those pre-recorded sessions. Okay, so I'll get started and you can hopefully see my screen okay. This is just the Chrome browser. So in Sweet Files, we do recommend that you use the Chrome browser. So if you're not already, please make the switch. And the main reason for that is that we do a lot of our testing in this particular browser, but also we have our Chrome extension and that just sits up to the top right corner of your Chrome browser. It might also be hidden behind this little puzzle icon and you can pin it to your Chrome browser by just clicking on this little pin here. And this is going to also power a lot of the functionality that you see in Zero Practice Manager or Workflow Max or Zero Tax if you're using one of those three products. So more on that uh, this Thursday at the training session, but for now just know that the Chrome extension is also an app that you'll likely want to install. Not only does it give that XPM integration, it also um, gives you a few little other things that we've got up our sleeve. So it makes it really nice and easy to print reports in PDF format and save them down to sweet files. So all will be revealed uh, on that Thursday session. Okay, so in order to start out um, logging into your Sweet Files site, you'll need your Sweet Files site URL. And so Sweet Files is built on top of Share, your SharePoint Online, a particular folder in SharePoint Online, which is a Microsoft product. And so what you'll actually need to log in is not only your Sweet Files site URL, but also your Microsoft email or your login and password. So we use Microsoft credentials to log into Sweet Files. And if you're not sure what your Sweet Files site URL is, it's one that you will need to become familiar with because you'll need it whenever you're logging into one of our apps. So when you are invited to Sweet Files by your admin, you will have received an email that contained that site URL. Um, it will be something.sharepoint.com slash sites slash Sweet Files. So these days when we set up a Sweet Files site, it will have the SharePoint URL plus slash sites slash Sweet Files. My site is just an old school .sharepoint.com one. So don't be alarmed if it looks a little bit different to yours. Everyone's site URL is unique to their business. If you're not sure what your Sweet Files site URL is, then please do reach out to your admin. Um, that will be whoever set up Sweet Files for your business and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. 
You might want to do what I've done, which is just bookmark that site URL. And once you've installed the Chrome extension and logged into it, you'll also be able to click on the Suite Files Chrome extension and click Open Suite Files, and that too will get you into your Suite Files site. But for now, I'm going to do it the long way. So I'm going to click on my bookmark. So my site is demosuite.sharepoint.com. You can also just type that into your browser like so and press enter. And then you're going to be prompted to enter in your Microsoft email, phone or Skype. So most of, for us, it's going to, um, most for everyone, it's going to really be their business email address. So don't worry about the fact that mine says dot on microsoft.com. It's just the way that we have our, our emails set up for you it will be your business email address. Again, if you're not sure, then check in with your admin and they'll be able to let you know. Um, you know they'll let you know which credentials to use. Click next and then it will prompt you for your passwords. Just bear with me while I grab that from my password manager. And for those of you who have multi-factor authentication, two-factor authentication, we call it lots of different things. But if you, as part of the login process, often get prompted for yet another code to enter in, or maybe you get an SMS verification code, and um, it will prompt you at this point here, once you've entered in your password, it will prompt you for that second um, authentication step. So for me, I don't have that process set up for my uh, Microsoft account. If you do have that um, set up, then you'll get prompted. Otherwise, it will just let you in like so. Now, one of the really key things about um, Suite Files at the moment is that it's undergoing a little bit of a makeover. So don't be alarmed if what you see on the screen right now doesn't reflect what you've been used to. So whether or not you started with this last week or this morning, your Suite Files site might look a little bit different. So we are rolling out quite, um, quite an exciting update in our world, uh, and it's going to be refreshing the files screen that you're going to be logging into. So mine looks like this. Yours might have the, um, the version which has your folders on your left hand side and your files on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do this afternoon, so we'll basically once we jump out of today's session, I'm going to get everyone who's attended this webinar today, everyone's site is going to get updated to this new version. So you don't have to learn two different ways of doing things. So what I show you here today is what you're going to basically take away with you and I'll update your suite files sites. Um, so for those in New Zealand, it'll be around quarter past three if I'm, if I'm quick about it. And I'll flick your uh, suite files project champion or your suite files admin an email update just to let them know that that has rolled out to your site. And for you guys as suite files users, you'll just need to refresh your browser. So just refresh that once and then the new version that looks like this will show up for you. So um, yeah, just any questions on that, do let me know. It's um, going to be a lot more easy to use. Um, so yeah, come on board with the new version. You won't hate it. And if anyone does have any questions at all, then I am running a webinar uh, tomorrow afternoon and you're welcome to attend that as well. So we'll get into the basics, however. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom in, reset that view. And one of the things with this particular view is you'll see all of your folders and files in the same list. So I've logged in, I'm at my home level as specified here. So keep an eye on the top here as I click into my folders. So say I've got my clients folder here. And do forgive me if this one takes a little while to load. Um, it's, it's, for this particular demo site, um, we need to run a little bit of an update behind the scenes. But for you, you should just be able to click through. You'll see your clients list. And what, will, what you'll be able to do is just start filtering by that. 
So making it a lot easier for you to find things in switch files. So if I'm looking up, um, let's just go for one, two, three accounting, I can start typing in one, two, three and anything with that search term in the name there, it will show up. So my results or my clients list will be restricted based on my filtering term here. So your cursor is going to be in that filtering field straight away when you click on the client's folder so you can just start typing. If you want to clear your results just click the x there and that will revert back to all of your clients in your list and if you click on any of the folders here so we'll go with an unarchived one. I've been really utilizing the archived option here obviously so let's go into 50-50 accounting, let's say. So as you click into your folders, all of your, for, for folders where you have files as well, so at the 50-50 accounting level, I've got all of my financial year, correspondence, permanent folders, etc. And then below those will be my files. So folders in alphabetical order, followed by files in alphabetical order. You can also use the uh, click the column headers along the top here. So if I'm wanting to look at files by date last modified, you can click the column heading and that will show you what's been modified most recently. And you've also got the size or who last modified. And if you're just wanting res to restrict your results, so perhaps I'm looking for things that Josh has last done, if you click into the last modified drop down, then you'll be able to just restrict those results by person and also by file type. To remove a filtering option, just click their name again and that will remove it. And you can also select multiple people like so. Now, if you're looking to restrict your view by file type, just note that the folder option is also within this view. So you could be looking for a particular Word document um, that contains the word file, excuse my terrible examples, but um, this is our demo site, of course. So you, you can really utilize those filters to find what you need really, really quickly. In terms of navigating around suite files, as you go deeper and deeper into your folder structure, you'll find the breadcrumb along the top can take you back to the level that you want to go. So if I wanted to skip back to the clients folder, I can just click on clients here. And the other thing to note is that home um, will, for the most part, show up in your view. So if you go into, if you've got quite a, um, quite a deep folder structure so anything past kind of three or four levels once you get into that fourth level folder then you'll find that the home portion of the breadcrumb will disappear and you can always go back to that by clicking on these little three dots to the left of the last folder and you'll be able to navigate back um, so the deeper you go into your folder structure the more you'll find the more folders you'll find in those little three dots um, drop down so that little menu option there the other thing to note is that if you want a really easy way to get back home so no matter where you are you might be in the template manager or the doc signing management screen so you can always click on files or the suite files logo and both of those options will bring you back home Along the top here, we have our favorites. And so favorites are used for any files or folders where you're going to want to use them or access them regularly. So add them to the, your favorites and you'll always be able to find them really easily. So in order to favorite something, if it is a folder, so what you'll want to do is in the let's go 007 enterprises so when you're actually in the folder you'll see the star icon here so if you click that once then it will turn to gold and then that will have added it to your favorites for your files you can click on the icon out to the right here and also for any other subfolders 
if you see the star icon and it's empty, if you click that once, then that will add it to your favorites. Now back in the favorites list, your favorites are going to be separated between files and folders on the left hand side. So your default view is going to be your favorited files. And then if you switch into your folders, you'll see the folder favorites. So nice and easy way to click into 007 Enterprises, might be a new client, and I can access their documents nice and easily. Once I'm done, I can unfavorite them wherever I see the gold star, just click that and that will remove those folders and files from your favorites. Recents is a list of any files or folders that you have created or modified recently. And so this particular recents view, if you've already been in here, you'll see that this looks very, very familiar because it's exactly what we've rolled out for the files view. So the recents view and the advanced search results have looked like this for some time now. And we're just gradually rolling out this new look and feel across the entire suite files interface. So files was next up on that list and it's quite a big one. So we're really happy to get that out. And in terms of this recents view, what you can do is just look at all of the um, documents within here. They should be in recent order, but you can also click on the date last modified column if you want to. And from here, you can click on the document and it will take you into the preview of that file. If you're wanting to check out the details of that file, you can click anywhere else on the row. So anywhere but the um, clickable things, if you will. So don't click on the link here, that will take you to the document. But if I click somewhere in here, then you'll see the details panel it will show me a few details about that document, such as its size, last modified. So it's a lot of the information that you already see here, um, but it's got things like document ID as well, if that is of interest to you. And we are going to be bulking this area up quite a bit in the future. So um, watch this space. So for documents particularly, we're looking to include a file thumbnail slash preview, and that's going to all be included in this little info panel. So if you don't want to use the info panel just yet, then you can always click the eye icon out to the right of your screen there, and that will hide that info panel for you. Wherever you see the three dots in the suite files, those will be your actions that you can perform on that particular item. So in this case, it's a file. I can click on the three dots and I can do things like show in folder. So that will navigate me to the um, no guesses, all the Kiwis probably be familiar with this client um, phone number. Um, you can just tell the imagination in this office runs a bit wild. Everything is either donut or pizza related. I don't know what to say. Um, but here, if you click on the three dots, click show on folder, that will never get you to that client folder. Um, you can preview and edit the document from here. You can share it. If you've got super sweet, you can share to connect, which is a way to share a file with one of your clients externally. Um, you can copy the file, download it, archive or delete it. So there's going to be different things that you can do with your files in different areas of suite files. So that's what you can do with them in recents. And you can also use the filters along the top here to again, restrict your results. So one thing to note, I don't think I've got too many examples here, but down the bottom here, you can see I've been sending some emails. So whenever I save an email to Suite Files via my Outlook add-in, then those, those email messages are also going to show up in my recents. So if you're looking for recent emails for a client, then you can use the file type to, to filter by email for a particular client. So your client filter is looking through any folder that sits at your client's level in Suite Files. So you'll see the client uh, option in your recents as well as your advanced search results. So it's a good one to keep an eye out for. An eye out for. So if I look for emails for Mitzi Waffles Limited, then it will just show me files or email files that are stored in the Mitzi Waffle PTY Limited folder. I can also look for any of my 
uh, colleagues recents as well. So if we click on the all option, that will give me visibility across my entire site. So if uh, a particular file is within a folder that I don't have access to, then I won't see it in recents. So it's all what we call security trimmed. It comes down to your permissions. What can you see? Um, but say if somebody is away and you've got access to their client folder, you'll be able to see, okay, well, uh, let's take a look at 007 plumbing. Um, what, were, what was the team working on over the last wee while? So that's one way that you can use the recents area. Now tasks is a, it's an area where if you've shared something with a colleague, so in suite files, you can share a file or a folder with one another, that will land in the recipient's tasks list. So you can see that Arisha shared this folder with me. I can click on the folder and she's asked us to do some things with it and I can maybe you know create some documents within that folder I can maybe check some of the documentation that she has in here work through that and then once I'm done then I can click on that folder and click mark is done and that will send a message to Arisha letting her know that that's all done and that will actually clear itself from my tasks list because I've got my view filtered to incomplete tasks and there are also the marked as done tasks. Um, so this is really comes down to what's been shared with you, whether or not you'll see anything in here. If you are a connect user, so if you're going to be using connect in your business to share folders or files with your clients externally, then you'll find um, the shared files or file requests in here in the sent area as well as any folders or files that you've sent to your own colleagues internally. So sent tasks will be a bundle of different things depending on um, what exactly you're using in suite files. So to share a file with somebody what you do is you find the file um, so we'll jump into 007 Enterprises here and let's see if we've got anything here. So let's just pretend that this needs to be checked over by somebody. What I can do is come along to the three dots for my file, click share, enter the person's name that I want to share this with. I'm just going to share this with myself so you can see what happens um, at both the sender and recipient level. Enter in your message. Down here we have different sharing reasons. So they're just a really quick way to let your recipient know why you're sharing that file with them. So in this case, it could just be for their information. It might be for their review and edit or approval. So I'm just going to go with review and edit. You can set a due date if you like as well and then click share. And then that person will receive an email notification in their inbox as well as see in their tasks. They go in here, they'll see an unread, so a bolded uh, document or folder to look at. So if you are on our super suite plan, then you'll see this exact view here. If you're on our semi suite plan, we have an older view of tasks, but in the new year, we will be working on bringing everyone across onto the same view. And we'll also be enhancing the tasks a little bit more as well. So stay tuned for that. The same process applies for your folders. So in terms of sharing a folder with a colleague, you just come out to the three dots here and click the share option. So not to be confused with share to connect, that's the external sharing. The internal sharing with your colleagues is just the simple share button. It takes you to the same screen, pop their name in there and away you go.
Now, under the more drop down, it will depend on what plan you're on. So which subscription plan you have, as well as what your own user permissions are um, that will determine what you actually see in this drop down. So for me, I'm on the super suite plan on this account. So I've got access to document signing and connected folders. I'm an admin, so I can see manage templates. But for everyone else, no matter what your user role or plan is, you should see scans and the recycle bin. So your admins will probably be in touch and if you're going to be utilizing scans within the business. So I'll leave that to them to talk to you about. And if you are looking to use document signing or the connected folders feature, then do reach out to us. We've got lots of resources available on our help center or for those who have bought, uh, purchased any additional onboarding, you might want to use some of your um, training to look at connect and doc signing. But what I'll do for everyone else today is just touch on the recycle bin. So the recycle bin will be visible for everyone, but it just depends on whether or not you have delete permissions in your, in your user settings. Um, so if that permission has been granted for you, that will determine whether or not this recycle bin is of any use to you or not. So for those of you who do have delete permissions, if you delete something, so if I click on the three dots here and click delete, or if it's a file, um, exactly the same process. Alongside a file, you've got the three dots and the delete option. There is also a multi-select. So if I wanted to delete these three files, if I've got permission to, I can multi-select. And then in the top right corner, you can see that you can move and copy these files and then the other actions are all contained within this three dot drop down. So I can, as you can see, delete those here. So you won't see the delete button if you don't have delete permissions. The other thing is all administrators. So everyone who's a suite files administrator, you'll get delete permissions. Um, that's an included permission in your, uh, in your user role. So let's say you do have delete permissions and what you'll do when you hit delete, then that file or folder will land in the recycle bin. And so if you're a standard user with delete permissions, then you'll be able to see your own deletions if you've deleted them from within the Suite Files web app, which is the, the web version of Suite Files that I'm in here. And just note that these um, this particular screen, sometimes it might not, depends on how big your screen is really, you might not see the restore button. And so, and if that's the case, you just need to zoom out. Um, so control minus on your keyboard, and then that should bring the restore button into your view. This screen here doesn't have a filtering or a search option. So if you're looking for something in particular, maybe it's a client file and it has the client name, um, in the file or it would certainly be in the folder path. So I would use the control F function on your keyboard just to use the Chrome find um, or search option. So that is the best way to locate something. So if I just I'm looking for building, for example, it will just highlight any of those files that contain that term. So that's the best way to utilize the recycle bin. Now, if you want to restore something, then you've got 90 days. So just come in here, find the file or folder, click the restore button, and then that will re return that file or folder into its original location as specified in the folder column. If you're an administrator, you might be called upon by one of your team to help you restore a file. So if that's the case, then you do have access in your recycle bin to everyone's deletions. Just note that the deleted by column is organized in a bit of a bit of a different, unique way. So anyone who is the newest additions to your Microsoft 365 slash suite files account um, will be listed at the top of the screen. So um, you know, you've got Taylor, then Jacob's stuff's all grouped together, et cetera. So you'll find that um, everyone is grouped by user according to who's most recently joined the team. So as I said, we are just chipping away, moving through all of our screens and updating them. So 
hopefully sometime next year we'll have this screen updated and um, that will be a lot easier to filter and search by but for now hopefully those tips will help you um, in that situation where hopefully you can restore a file that you've um, inadvertently deleted if you can't find what you're looking for, and particularly if it's that 91st day and you, you know, it will no longer be in this recycle bin, then do reach out to our support team. We have magical ways where we can help you locate your, um, your document. So do not hesitate to reach out to us. We'll ask you several questions, um, but hopefully we'll be able to help you help you find those documents or hopefully just that one document that you crucially need. So don't be shy, please reach out. The other thing to note about um, things going missing or being relocated, you know, other people could rename or relocate that file or folder. So it's always good to have a hunt for it, use the filtering options and also be aware of our archiving feature. So everyone has the ability to archive something and it will depend on whether or not you have this show archive toggle switched on or off as to whether or not you can see your archived content as you're navigating your suite file site. So if we click on our clients folder, you will recall that I was having an absolute um, having an absolute time just archiving everything. So these folders, for example, they're only visible to me because I've got the show archived toggle switched on. The moment I toggle that off, then they're all hidden from my view. And the same for files. Any archived file is going to show up with an archived label alongside it, and I'll only be able to see them if I've got that toggle on. So that can often be... Um, the, the reason that someone cannot see something, it could be that someone has archived it and you just don't have your show archived toggle switched on. The other thing that you can do is use the search. So I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the searching options in Sweet Files. And we've got the top middle search bar. So it's a little bit different to the filter. The filter is just going to work on the folder that you're currently in, whereas the search will look across your entire site. And so we've got two different search options or three actually within the top middle search bar. So you place your cursor in here. And if you're looking for a client, then you just start typing in the part of the name that you want to search by. So it might be a surname. And then no matter how that client folder name is structured, so it could be first name, last name, last name, first name, it will search and pr it prioritizes your client folder results as indicated by this little person icon. These are your uh, client folders. Any other top hits um, will be specified here. It really just, just does depend on the search term as to what you'll find in the second portion, but it will only prioritize about 10 results. So if you're looking for something pretty specific, um, then it might not be the way to go. But if you're looking for um, Mitzi's Donut Co, click on the result, and then that will redirect you to Mitzi Donut Co's folder. If I'm looking for something specific, or in my case, I'm going to do an exceptionally vague search, for the term letter. Now, apparently I've got a client folder called new engage engagement letter example, um, but for the most part, this particular search is going to be not too helpful. So this version is just the quick search and you can see that there's a lot of results, but they're not that helpful. So what you do is you turn this quick search into an advanced search by either pressing enter on your keyboard or clicking the search for letter button, uh, that's the first option at the top of that list. And that will kick into the advanced search results where we have all of our filters about who um, last modified, what the file type is, who the client was. So really utilize these filters to restrict your results down even further. So I might look for things that I last modified and I could also look by date. So if I click on the last modified date, then I can see things that I've recently modified this morning. So that's likely the one that I want. So I will click into that and then that will take me into the preview of that file 
and I can start, um, you know, opening that up to edit that file and go from there. So if anyone's got any questions about that, then let me know. The other thing that you can use, that the third thing that you can use the search tool for is if you're in a particular client folder. So I'll go back into the one, two, three builders level. Um, so that's my client folder. And within this, I have my 2022 folder, a test folder, and all of these files. So I might not know where my particular document is sitting. It might be tucked away into a subfolder within a subfolder. But if I type in my search term, I'll do that again. So type in the search term. I can click the search in current folder for option. So just the second one down and that will look within the one, two, three builders folder and subfolders for any document um, or folder that contains the word letter. So that search, by the way, so the advanced search, whether or not you're using the search for or the search in current folder for, that is an advanced text search, full text search rather. So the search term might not necessarily be in the file name. It could also be in the document itself. So um, don't be alarmed if you get results that don't actually, you know, perhaps this document didn't even have the word letter in the title. It might be in the actual document itself, somewhere in the text. So that um, that text search there is super, super helpful if you're looking for a particular term, maybe in an email that you sent three months ago, that will um, help get you there. So what we'll do next is we'll just jump into, um, actually I'll just jump into my settings and we'll clear everything up. If anyone's got any questions, this is a very good chance to ask them I haven't seen any come through so I'm just going to start again so just pretend you didn't even see what I just did okay so we're going to start from scratch so what we're going to be looking at next is opening up and working with your files through the suite files web app so this is the preferred way to be working with your office file types particularly. So you've got your Word documents or your Excel spreadsheets, maybe even PowerPoint presentations. These are Microsoft file types. And so we can leverage the Microsoft 365 functionality to open up your documents and in your installed versions of the app. So you can see I've got Microsoft Word and Excel installed on my computer. I am going to first of all just unarchive these folders, this folder here. And I just want that unarchived for a moment. And what we'll do is we'll click into 16 Handles Limited. And again, I think I'll just, you can also unarchive things individually through the menu there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to work on this document here. This is a Word document. If I just click on the file, so click on the link here, that will open up the preview of the file. And in this view, I can't actually click on, I can't really work on this version. So it is just a preview of the document, but we do have two editing options in Suite Files. So for your Office documents, you've got Edit in Browser, or open an office. And so the edit and browser will open up the file in its online equivalent. So in this case, it's opened up the file in Word Online. And so what I'll do is I'll just make some changes to that file. So it's really good for just really lightweight changes. I'll make a change to the date. Now this particular base document or this file was used um, as was a template. It doesn't look like that that populated correctly. So that can be Wednesday things. I'll take you through all the template stuff on Wednesday, but let's just tidy up the document as best we can in this view. And we can hit save and close. Now, once we've saved that, those changes will be reflected back in the preview. If you don't see them straight away, don't be alarmed. You can just click the refresh uh, button in your browser and those changes will 
feed through. Um, it just can take a little moment longer for that preview to get updated. Now, if I would prefer to open up my documents in Microsoft Word, so the installed version of my app, then I can use the open in Office button here. And this will give me all of the functionality that I'll be used to. It's really handy, particularly for, um, you know, complex Excel spreadsheets that, um, you know, oftentimes with the online version of Excel, you just don't quite get all of the um, functionality that you need to work on all of your fancy spreadsheets. So what I would recommend doing is just trying out both of these options and see which one um, you prefer. But for now, what I'll do is I'll show you the open an office option. Keep an eye in the top, on the top middle of my screen. There's going to be a little drop down or like a little pop up that comes up at the top of my screen. And that's just a message from Chrome, double checking to make sure that I'm happy to open up this internet file. So that's all, that's all good. So you can carry on working on it. Um, but what I'll do is I'll click open an office and then I just need to click open Word. And that pop-up will appear, pretty, it kind of flashes up on the screen. So you've got to be a little bit quick about it. Now it's just asking me to log in on, to access the document. So I'm getting this little um, sign-in notification on my end. And this shouldn't happen for you. The reason it's happening for me is because I've got a couple of sweet files, sites, kicking around so I kind of swap between them throughout the day so for you guys because you've only got one sweet file site it shouldn't be an issue if you are getting um, prompted to log in it might um, be that you just need to clear clear some details behind the scenes you can reach out to our support team if that's the case because you shouldn't have to log in each and every time you want to work on a document but once I log in then you'll find like so the document opens up in Microsoft Word and you can see that it was last modified two minutes ago. So I get this information because I've opened up the file from the Suite Files web app. So I also got the autosave switched on. So if I was to start to make other edits, so let's just fix up a few of these bits and pieces. Excuse me, one moment. Okay, sorry, quick drink break. Um, now what we'll do is just make a few little changes. Oh, can't spell today. And if, if, as I'm editing this document, you can see that it's saving and that's saving back up to sweet files. So it's, you're working in that one source of truth document. And the other benefit is um, from working in the web app like this, if one of your colleagues was to jump into the document at the same time as you, you would see them in the top right corner of the screen, just below your own name and initials or, or profile pic. So this is this can be great and this can be annoying if someone's trying to jump into the document at the same time as you. Really just depends on what you're comfortable with, but it is a Microsoft um, co-authoring tool that, um, that you're uh, able to work in because you're opening up your files from suite files. So that could mean that I'm working on, you know, the first page of the document and maybe someone else needs to jump in and add some extras to an appendix or what have you. They would be able to do that in both of our changes. We'll save back up to suite files. For some of you, you might um, know about or have already installed the suite files drive. I did mention I'll go over a couple of our other apps for you this afternoon. So the suite files drive is a version of suite files that you access via your file explorer. So just your, your yellow folders as some people refer to them as. And the suite files drive is great. It serves a, a perfect, perfect purpose, which is if you are in another app, and you need to attach a file um, in Suite Files, then you can navigate to your S drive to upload that document. Um, or there might be certain file types or you know, certain documents that you have a different 
um, application that you need to open up and edit them within. And then therefore you'd need to use their suite drive to open those files up. But for your day-to-day -day Excel spreadsheet work and your Word document, PowerPoint, all of your office file types, as well as your PDF um, annotations and things like that, then we'd want you to be using the suite files web app. So you're just taking advantage of all of this functionality that we have on offer. The other thing to note about the Suite Files Drive is if you do end up working predominantly in that to open up and edit your files, if somebody else was to open that file up, either from Drive or the web, they won't be able to see that you're in that document. And therefore, any of those changes that you each make, there is a risk that someone's changes are not going to be saved. So it's a really, really important distinction. Um, we built Suite Files so that everyone works in their documents online in the browser. And so if anyone is wanting any additional training around working with their files correctly, then don't hesitate to reach out. I'm more than happy to take the team through that in more detail. But hopefully you've gotten a good overview here. If you've made your changes, so I might just make a few little final changes in this particular document's all set up for signing as well, which we can talk about another time. But once you're done with your changes in the desktop version of Word, then you click the X in the top right corner. And those changes will save back up to suite files. So Again, the preview in this case, particularly when you're opening up the file in the desktop app, those changes will not be reflected. You will need to refresh or jump out, jump back into the preview to see those changes take effect. But once I refresh, we should see that those edits that I made to tidy up the document are all there. And from here, we can do things like share or request signature, things like that. So all of that functionality is available on that latest and greatest version of the file. Alrighty, so if anyone is wanting to completely bypass this view, so this preview here, and go straight into editing mode in the desktop version, then what you can do is jump into your name in the top right corner, if you don't have your name, it will just be a cog icon. So click on the cog icon and click a user settings. For those of you who only see a cog, what you'll need to do is just edit your first name and last name here. This is particularly important if you're going to be using document signing and suite files. We need this info to generate your uh, custom or your, your system generated signature. So please do pop those details in if you see them empty. But the file preferences here on the left is what you'll need to do to go to if you're wanting to change the behavior of what happens when you open up your Microsoft files. So toggle this option on. There's no save on this screen. So what you'll need to do is just jump back into files, Let's find a file here. It can be any document. Now, when you click on the document, it's going to pop that message up. This time, you're going to want to check the box, which remembers that as your preference. So I'm going to click on the document, I'm going to check this box, then click open word, and it does happen super, super fast. Um, so do be warned, it's logging me in. And from this point forward, so this is a different letter, keep in mind, but I'll just update that. From this point forward, once you open up any other Word document, you're not going to get prompted. It's just going to open up Word for you. For me, yes, it's asking me to sign in million times I need to get that sorted but other than that for you guys it will just you'll click on the word document in suite files web and it will open up in the desktop app and you've got all of that editing functionality at your fingertips the same applies for your excel spreadsheets so if you are working in an excel 
Um, even though you might have already done that whole process for your Word documents, you will need to repeat it for your Excel spreadsheets. So again, it's just checking, clicking on the link to the Excel file, checking the box, and then clicking Open Excel. Okay, so what we'll do next uh, is we're going to jump into the Outlook add-in. So for those of you who have not yet installed the Outlook add-in, I'm talking about the desktop version, by the way. So we do have a couple of different ways that you can access um, suite files via Outlook. And if you are using the web or the browser-based version of Outlook, or if you're on a Mac, using Outlook for Mac, then you need to reach out to our support team and ask us to enable the um, Outlook for Mac or Outlook for web versions. We'll deploy that for you and let you know once you can go and enable that. So that's probably a job for your admin. If you're interested in doing that, they'll need to reach out to us before we enable that for your Suite Files site. But so this part of the training is just going to be for those of you who are using the installed or the desktop version of Outlook for Windows. So in terms of installing the Outlook add-in, you click on your name in the top right corner and then select download our apps. And then the Outlook add-in needs to be downloaded. And you might need to reach out to your IT team depending on your setup. So if we go and open a folder, you can see here there is a, disk, a folder with disk one within it. You click on that and then you double click the suite mail version to install that. Sorry for the stopping and starting. I'm just having like, you know, slight, um, a slight tickle in my throat. So apologies for that. I talk too much, I think. Um, a bit of a, um, a bit of a problem, <laughs> apologies. So what you'll do once you've run that um, is that you'll need to just open or close and reopen Outlook. And then in Outlook, bring that up here you will see on the right hand side, you'll see a login button. So suite files should show up. So it'll kind of pop out a little panel on the right hand side and that will ask you to log in. That's the game where you need to know at least your suite files site URL. But once you click the login button, it's going to redirect you. It's gonna open up your browser and it's going to ask you for your site URL. So enter that in carry on with the process and then you can come back here once that process is finished and you should be logged in. So it um, will load your home page like you can see here and the idea with the Outlook add-in is that you can as you get emails in from your clients you can file them away into their folder in suite files. So most will have an email or a correspondence folder and so for example here I have this email here that has an invoice attachment. So what I can do is I tend to just use the search. So alongside this little client's filter, if you type in, <clears throat> if you type in part of the client name and we'll go into Mitzi Smith Waffles and we'll jump into the email folder. And what we do is in our inbox, we hold down the email and we drag and drop that into the white space here. And that will upload the email into Suite Files for you. Now, once you've done that, you'll see an added to Suite Files category label applied in Outlook. And so that will let you know that the email has been saved in. You could also just at this level, drag and drop and release the email over the folder that you want to upload that email to. That will work as well. If you have an attachment that you want to save, so I'm just gonna pop that into my jobs folder here. Excuse me again.
Okay, so once you're in your folder, say we want to save just this attachment rather than the whole email, you can drag and drop the attachment in to Sweet Files as well. So that's now in Sweet Files. If you were to access the My Job folder from within the web app, this invoice document will be there as well. You can close the little upload status bar down the bottom, close that. Um, you can also click on the three dots to see what you can do with that file. If I want to now open that file up in Sweet Files, I can click open in browser. That will redirect me to that document within my site. And here that file is um, ready for me to do next steps. You can navigate back home, clicking the home button, but really it's just a case of using the client's search to locate the folder that you want to file that email within. If you are going to be responding to your client, you might not want to drag and drop and file that main email. You might want to, you might want to save the attachment. Um, but if you are going to be replying, What you can do when you hit send, I'm just gonna make this subject line unique for today, just so that um, I don't, I make sure that I get my save on send message. So what I'll do is I'll hit send, and what you'll see is a prompt asking if you want to save this email to sweet files. So what you do is if you don't wanna save the email, you just click no and hit send, and that sends it without saving it into sweet. If you click on yes, then you have to um, choose the location that you want to save that email within. These suggestions will start to get a lot better the more you use it. Um, we're going to come up with an update either next week or later this week or maybe next year, um, TBD, uh, on these suggestions. So they should improve a lot more over the coming weeks slash months. So for this case, I want to save it into Mitzi. Let's go Mitzi Smith Waffles. I'll have to click edit because she's not coming up in any of these suggestions. Click edit. And then again, I use the search just to locate that folder nice and quickly. So pop your cursor into this client search here. Type in Mitzi. Mitzi Smith Waffles. Want to pop that in the email folder. Choose location and we're good. We also have this auto save all emails checkbox. And so what this is asking is if you want the whole conversation, so even future replies that come back from Mitzi with this subject line and the same recipients, these emails will all get saved into that same location. So that's what that checkbox does. So just to clarify there, that will only work provided the recipients and the to and from. So it can be um, me sending the email, Mitzi receiving it, or Mitzi receiving it, me sending it, um, all of those sorts of things. I think that was the same thing, but never mind. Um, if she then wants to add somebody else to the email thread, then that will kind of remove the rule that I have in place. Um, likewise, if she changes the subject line, so the subject line needs to kind of stay the same, um, excluding the re and the ford uh, type prefixes. So the overall subject line needs to stay the same and the recipients and then that um, autosave rule will be honored. Okay, so once you have made those selections, you can click send and file. And that email will be saved into that location in speech files. Apologize guys, um, it's only Monday and I basically almost already lost my voice. So that's not a great sign. Um, I apologize for the stop and start throughout the session today, but hopefully that's given you a really good overview to start with. Uh, and if anyone needs to ask any questions, then please flick them through to me. If you've got my email address, otherwise support at switchfiles.com um, is monitored by my whole team. And so we'll get back to you there uh, as soon as we possibly can.
So for those who want it, I will flick across the recording and um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you again at some other webinars later on this week. So likewise, if you need those, um, those additional webinar links, then you can reach out either my email address or our support team and we'll flick those through to you. The next session is going to be at four o'clock today, um, New Zealand time. So in about an hour's time. And as a reminder, I will just switch on the new files view that you saw today. I'll flip that on for everyone who's attended just so that you've got the, the new version and you're not having to um, learn other ones. Okay, I think I'll leave it there. Thank you so, so much. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.